Ghost of Tsushima was an amazing game when it came out a year ago, with a meaty campaign, stellar samurai combat, and arguably one of the most gorgeous open worlds ever created. This Iki Island expansion is its first paid DLC, which is also included as part of the new director's cut, and it delivers a brand new island, a new story chapter, new side quests, and a healthy heap of new secrets and collectibles to discover. In order to play the Iki Island content, you'll need to progress to at least Act 2 of the main campaign, you can also circle back and do it after beating the story. That's when Jin discovers that a group of Mongols, led by a woman named the Eagle, are planning an invasion of Tsushima from the neighboring Iki Island. Wanting to nip the invasion in the bud, Jin heads to Iki Island himself, which is a mostly lawless land inhabited primarily by bandits who are also suffering at the hands of the Eagle and her tribe. Iki Island is a place of great significance to Jin, because it's the place where his father died, which makes the story deeply personal. There are certainly one or two head-scratching plot reveals that border on a logical, but all things considered. But story aside, the best part about this expansion is the whole new island to explore. Once again you begin with a map that's almost completely blank and are free to set out in any direction to discover its many landmarks, areas of interest, and some of the coolest easter eggs to collect while exploring the lands. Many of these landmarks are identical to the kind of thing found in the main campaign, like bamboo shoots, hot springs, lighthouses, and haiku spots, but there are plenty of entertaining new distractions to discover, too. That includes archery challenges, animal sanctuaries, playable flashbacks, and a handful of side quests. Two new mythic tales are also awesome, and have especially worthwhile rewards. While the context of every quest varies, the content feels very familiar. You'll infiltrate lots of Mongol camps whether by stealth or standoff, follow footprints to track people and animals down, and charge through open fields for large-scale battles. The one way where Iki Island truly shakes things up is in its enemies. There's a new type called the Shaman that is not only a formidable fighter, but will also buff all nearby enemies with their song and dance. In addition to that, there are now enemies that will switch up their weapons mid-fight. That means you might begin a fight in water stance to deal with an enemy that's wielding a shield, but then have to swap to stone stance once they strap that shield to their back and pull out two swords. It sounds simple, but it can actually be a good challenge to juggle when you're also worrying about the crowd of enemies surrounding you, all wielding different weapons. It's just another layer to think about that makes combat even more enjoyable. Ghost of Tsushima is an enormous and densely packed samurai adventure that often left completely awestruck with both its visual spectacle and excellent combat. By steadily introducing new abilities instead of stat upgrades, its swordplay manages to stay challenging, rewarding, and fun throughout the entire 40 to 50 hours that it took to beat the campaign. A few aspects are surprisingly lacking in polish in comparison to other first-party Sony games, especially when it comes to enemy AI and the stealth part of its stealth action split. Still this is an extraordinary open-world action-adventure game that solves several issues that have long gone unaddressed in the genre, while also just being an all-around samurai slashing game of all time. If more Ghost of Tsushima is what you want, the Iki Island expansion is exactly that. It provides another compelling story that dives deep into Jin's past, a new and absolutely gorgeous island to explore that's full of meaningful collectibles, and a couple of challenging additions to combat in the form of enemies that force you to think on your feet even more than before. The quest design is disappointingly familiar to everything we've already played in the main game, but any opportunity to revisit the stunning world that Sucker Punch has made is one worth taking. Iki Island doesn't do much beyond just offering more Ghost of Tsushima, but the new content is extremely worthwhile, thanks to a story that dives deeper into Jin's past, a few new combat wrinkles, and plenty of secrets to discover. Sony's PlayStation 5 version of Ghost of Tsushima's new director's cut, is one best-looking game ever made. With DualSense wireless controller haptic feedback, and dynamic 4K resolution targeting 60fps performance mode. When marketing the game's original release last year, developer Sucker Punch revealed Kurosawa Mode, an apparent effort to demonstrate that, despite being a Western studio, it was taking the responsibility that comes with telling a story set in Japan's past seriously. Named for the brilliant Japanese filmmaker Akira Kurosawa, who made a number of legendary samurai epics, this mode combined a Japanese dub with a black and white filter and audio tweaks meant to mimic the sound of 1950s TVs. However, the conspicuous lack of Japanese lip sync meant that, particularly in close-ups, any potential sense of authenticity was lost. 
That's thankfully no longer an issue in this director's cut, but the larger reason why invoking Kurosawa's name was a significant overreach remains. Ghost of Tsushima is a decent enough open-world game, but it lacks the spark of true inspiration or daring that would set it apart from its peers. As a result, it also lacks the distinctive character and greatness of Kurosawa's best films. With that, what's your thoughts on this director's cut DLC expansion, and on the game? Have you played the game on the PS5 yet? Please let me know by commenting below and also consider subscribing to my channel and click the bell icon for notification of my new videos. As always thank you for watching.